I rise to present the budget for the year 2019-20. The recent election which brought us to this August House today was charged with brimming hope and desire for a bright and stable new India. Like never before, India celebrated its democracy by coming out to vote in large numbers. Voters' turnout was highest at 67.9%. Every section, young, old, first-time voters, voters since the first general election, women, all turned up to stamp their approval of a performing government. Through their unambiguous and firm mandate, they have reaffirmed putting the nation first. The people of India have validated the two goals for our country's future, that of national security and economic growth. The first term of Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi led NDA government stood out as a performing government a government whose signature was in the last mile delivery. Between 2014 and 19, we provided a rejuvenated center state dynamic, cooperative federalism, GST council, and a strident commitment to fiscal discipline. We had set the ball rolling for a new India, planned and assisted by the Niti Aayog, a broad-based think tank. We have showed by our deeds that the principle reform, perform, transform can succeed. On many programs and initiatives, we had worked on unprecedented scale. Average amount spent on food security per year approximately doubled during 2014-19 compared to the preceding five years. Number of patents issued more than trebled three times in 2017-18 as against the number of patents issued pre-14. Our last mile delivery stood out and the unknown citizen in every nook and corner of our country felt the difference. Our objective was and continues to be Mazboot Desh Ke Liye Mazboot Nagrik. Mega programs and services which we initiated and delivered during those five years will now be further accelerated. We shall further simplify procedures, incentivize performance, reduce red tape and make the best use of technology just as we did earlier. I am confident we will achieve our goals. Chanakya Niti Sutra says, Karya Purusha Karena Lakshyam Sampadayate Meaning, with determined human efforts, the task will surely be completed. An Urdu couplet, pardon me my pronunciation, Yakin ho to khoi rasta nikalta hai. Yakin ho to khoi rasta nikalta hai. Hava ki oat bi. Lekar Charag Jalta hai. Vision for the decade. Our economy was at approximately 1.85 trillion US dollars when we formed the government in 2014. Within five years, it has reached 2.7 trillion US dollars. Hence, it is well within our capacity to reach the 5 trillion US dollars in the next few years. In the interim budget of 2019-20 presented in February 2019, we gave ourselves a vision for the decade. I flag here the 10 points of our vision laid before us. Building physical, social and social infrastructure, Digital India reaching every sector of the economy, pollution-free India, 
with green mother earth and blue skies. Make in India with particular emphasis on MSMEs, startups, defense manufacturing, automobiles, electronics, fabs and batteries, and medical devices. Water, water management, clean rivers, blue economy, space programs, Gaganyaan, Chandrayaan, and satellite programs, self-sufficiency and export of food grains, pulses, oil seeds, fruits and vegetables, healthy society, Ayushman Bharat, well-nourished women and children, safety of citizens, Team India with Jan Bagidari. Minimum government, maximum government. governance. These were the vision we set before ourselves. With this vision set before us, with the mandate given by its people, we are determined to take India to that height that it richly deserves. I strongly believe that with the clear-headed leadership of Honorable Prime Minister, we can achieve our goal. So what are the plans to reach the 5 trillion economy? The Indian economy will grow to become a $3 trillion economy in the current year itself. It is now the sixth largest in the world. Five years ago, it was at the 11th position. In purchasing power parity terms, we are in fact the third largest economy already, only next to China and the USA. To attain this and more, we need to continue undertaking many structural reforms. In the last five years, we saw many big reforms in particular, indirect taxation, bankruptcy, and real estate. While these reforms were happening here in the parliament, the common man's life was being changed through mudra loans to help him to do his business, and through several programs it was being ensured that his or her kitchen had become smokeless. His or her house got electricity connection, and women's dignity was respected with the provision of toilets in home. The common man was served even as a major transformational reforms were being rolled out. And for this to continue, we need to invest heavily in infrastructure, in digital economy, and on job creation in small and medium firms. Respected Speaker, sir, it took us over 55 years for the Indian economy to reach $1 trillion. But when the country and her people's hearts are filled with asha, vishwas, and akanksha. That is, when the hearts are filled with hope, trust, and aspirations, we, in five years, in just five years, added one trillion dollars. As I said, today we are nearing a three trillion dollar level. So when we aspire to reach a five trillion dollar level, many wonder if it's possible. If we can appreciate our citizens' purushat or their goals of human spirit or pursuit, filled with their inherent desire to progress, led by the dedicated leadership present in this house, the target is eminently achievable. All of India's private sector industries, all of India's private sector industries, small, medium, or large, have played a substantial role in growing our economy. I recall the words of an eminent industry leader who said that his company's growth has always aligned itself with India's growth before and post-independence. So if before independence, India Inc. understood Swadeshi, today they understand Make in India. We do not look down upon legitimate profit earning. Gone are the days of policy paralysis and license quota control regimes. India Inc. are India's job creators. They are the nation's wealth creators. Together with mutual trust, we can gain, catalyze fast, and attain sustained growth. 
I wish to propose a number of initiatives as part of a framework for kick-starting the virtuous cycle of domestic and foreign investments. Connectivity is the lifeblood of our economy. The government has given a massive push to all forms of physical connectivity through Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana, industrial corridors, dedicated freight corridors, Bharat Mala and Sagar Mala projects, Jal Marg Vikas and Udan schemes, while the industrial corridors would improve infrastructure availability for greater industrial investment in the catchment regions, the dedicated freight corridors would mitigate the congestion of a railway network benefiting the common man. The ambitious program of Bharat Mala would help develop national road corridors and highways, while Sagar Mala would enhance port connectivity, modernization and port-linked industrialization. If Sagar Mala is aimed at improving the infrastructure for external trade, equally it is the poor man's transport too. The Jalmarg Vikas project for capacity augmentation of navigation on national waterways is aimed at smoothening interna internal trade carried through inland water transport. These initiatives will improve logistics tremendously, reducing the cost of transport and increasing the competitiveness of domestically produced goods. The Udan scheme is providing air connectivity to smaller cities and enabling the common citizens of our country to avail air travel. All these programs are also helping bridge the rural and urban divide. As the world's third largest domestic aviation market, the time is ripe for India to enter into aircraft financing and leasing activities from Indian shores. This, this is critical to the development of self-reliant aviation industry, creating aspirational jobs in aviation finance besides leveraging the business opportunities available in India's financial special economic zones, namely International Financial Services Centre, the IFSC. Government will implement the essential elements of the regulatory roadmap for making India a hub for such activities. For providing and enabling a ecosystem for growth in India of maintenance, repair and overall MRO, maintenance, repair and overhaul industry, it is proposed to leverage India's engineering advantage and potential to achieve self-reliance in this vital aviation segment. Government will adopt suitable policy interventions to create a congenial atmosphere for the development of MRO in the country. The new metro rail projects for a total route length of 300 kilometers have been approved during 2018 and 19. Also, during 2019, about 210 kilometers metro lines have been operationalized. With this, 657 kilometers of metro rails network has become operational across the country. 657 kilometers. India's first indigenously developed payment ecosystem for transport based on National Common Mobility Card, NCMC standards, was launched by the Honorable Prime Minister in March 2019. This will enable people to play, pay multiple kinds of transport charges, including metro services and toll tax, across the country. This interoperable transport card runs on Rupee card and would allow the holders to pay for their bus travel, toll taxes, parking charges, retail shopping and even withdraw money. Phase 2 of the FAME scheme, following approval of the Cabinet, with an outlay of 10,000 crore rupees over a period of three years, has commenced from 1st April 2019. The main objective of the scheme is to encourage faster adoption of electric vehicles by way of offering up 
upfront incentive on purchase of electric vehicles and also by establishing the necessary charging infrastructure for electric vehicles. Only advanced battery and registered e-vehicles will be incentivized under the scheme with greater emphasis on providing affordable and environment-friendly public transport transportation options for the common man. The government will carry out a comprehensive restructuring of national highway program to ensure that the national highway grid of desirable length and capacity is created using financiable model. After completing the phase one of Bharat Mala, in the second phase, states will be helped to develop state road networks. We need to develop our inland waterways to shift a significant portion of inland cargo, inland cargo movement from road and rail. This government envisions using the rivers for cargo transportation, which will also help to decongest roads and railways. As part of the Jalmarg Vikas project, for enhancing the navigational capacity of the Ganga, a more multimodal terminal at Varanasi has become functional in November 2018, and two more and two more such terminals at Sahib Ganj and Haldia, a navigational lock at Faraka, would be completed in 1920. To move, the movement of cargo volume on Ganga is estimated to increase by nearly four times in the next four years. This will make movement of freight passenger cheaper and reduce our import bill. It is estimated that railway infrastructure would need an investment of 50 lakh crores between 2018 to 2030. Given that the capital expenditure outlays of railways are around 1.5 to 1.6 lakh crores per annum, completing even all sanctioned projects would take decades. It is therefore proposed to use public-private partnership to unleash faster development and completion of tracks, rolling stock manufacturing and also delivery of passenger freight services. To take connectivity infrastructure to the next level, we will build on, a, on the successful model in ensuring power connectivity, one nation, one grid. Earlier we spoke about one nation, one card for mobility of common man. Now it is one nation, one grid that has ensured power availability to states at affordable rates. I propose to make available a blueprint this year for developing gas grids, water grids, highways and regional airports. So the scaling up that we talked about which marks the USP of this government is revealed in each one of these examples. We do it in that scale each time. The recommendations of High Level Empowered Committee on retirement of old and inefficient plants and addressing low utilization of gas plant capacity due to paucity of natural gas will also be taken up for implementation now. Our government launched Ujwal Discom Assurance Yojana, Uday, in 2015, aimed at financial and operational turnaround of DISCOMs. Government is examining the performance of the scheme and it will further get improved. We will work with the state governments to remove barriers like cross-subsidy surcharges, undesirable duties on open access sales or captive generation for industrial and other bulk power consumers. Besides these structural reforms, considerable reforms are needed in tariff policy. A package for power sector tariffs and structural reforms would soon be announced. It is proposed that several reform measures would be taken, taken up to promote rental housing. Current rental laws are archaic 
as they do not address the relationship between the lesser and the leasee realistically and fairly. A model tenancy law will also be finalized and circulated to the states. Large public infrastructure can be built on land parcels held by the central ministries and central public sector enterprises all across the country. Through an innovative instrument or innovative instruments such as joint development and dedicated online portal. Under the interest subvention scheme for MSMEs, 350 crores of rupees has been allocated for the year 2019-20 for 2% interest subvention for all GST registered MSMEs on fresh or on incremental loans on fresh or on incremental loans. Government payments to suppliers and contractors are a major source of cash flow, especially to SMEs and MSMEs. Investment in MSMEs will receive a big boost if these delays in payment are eliminated. Government will create a payment platform for MSMEs to enable filing of bills and payment thereof on the platform itself, thereby cutting down the time and the process itself. Uh, sorry, encouraged by the overwhelming response, the Government of India has decided to extend the pension benefit to about three crore retail traders and shopkeepers whose annual turnover is less than 1.5 crores under a new scheme, namely Pradhan Mantri Karam Yogi Mandan scheme. Enrollment into the scheme will be kept simple, requiring only Aadhaar and a bank account, and the rest will be on self-declaration. We recognize that investment-driven growth requires access to low-cost capital. It is estimated that India requires investments averaging 20 lakh crores of rupees every year. A number of measures are proposed to enhance the sources of capital for infrastructure financing. A credit guarantee enhancement corporation for which regulations have been notified by the RBI will be set up in 2019-20. An action plan to deepen the market for long-term bonds, including for deepening markets for corporate bond repos, credit default swaps, etc., with specific focus on infrastructure sector, will be put in place. It is proposed to permit investments made by FIIs and FPIs in debt securities issued by infrastructure debt fund, non-bank finance corp companies, the IDS, NBFCs, to be transferred, sold to any domestic investor within specified lock-in period. Corporate debt markets are crucial for the infrastructure sector. Given the need to further deepen bond markets, a number of measures are proposed to be taken up. To deepen the corporate tripartite repo market in corporate debt securities, government will work with regulators, the RBI and the SEBI, to enable stock exchanges to allow AA-rated bonds as collaterals. Use of friendliness of trading platforms for corporate bonds will be reviewed, including issues arising out of capping of international security identification number, the ISIN. It's right time to consider increasing minimum public shareholding in the listed companies. I have asked SEBI to consider raising the current threshold of 25% to 35%. As a, key source, as a key source of capital to the Indian economy, it is important to ensure a harmonized and hassle-free investment experience for foreign portfolio investors. Hence, it is proposed to rationalize and streamline the existing Know Your Customer, the KYC norms for FPIs to make it more investor-friendly without compromising the integrity of 
cross-border capital inflows. It is time to take our capital markets closer to the masses and meet various social welfare objectives related to inclusive growth and financial inclusion. I propose to initiate steps towards creating an electronic fundraising platform, a social stock exchange, under the regulatory ambit of Securities and Exchange Board of India, the SEBI, for listing social enterprises and voluntary organizations. For listing social enterprises and voluntary organizations working for the realization of a social welfare objective so that they can raise capital as equity, debt, or as units like a mutual fund. It is important to get retail investors to invest in treasury bills and securities issued by the government. Efforts made by the Reserve Bank will need to be supplemented with further institutional development using stock exchanges. For this purpose, interoperability of RBI depositories and SEBI depositories would be necessary to bring, to bring about seamless transfer of treasury bills and government securities between RBI and depository ledgers, and for enabling this, the government will take up necessary measures in this regard in consultation with RBI and the SEBI. FDI inflows into India have remained robust despite global headwinds. Speaker Sir, global foreign direct investment flows slid by 13% in 2018 to 1.3 US 1.3 trillion US dollars from 1.5 trillion in the previous year. The third consecutive annual decline according to the UNCTAD's UNCTAD's World Investment Report in 2019. This is India's FDI flows in 2018-19 remained strong. If that was the global picture, India's inflows in 18-19 remained strong at 64.37 billion US dollars, marking a 6% growth over the previous year. I propose to further consolidate, Speaker Sir, the gains in order to make India a more attractive FDI destination. A. The government will examine suggestions of further opening up of FDI in aviation, in media, animation, ABGC, and insurance sectors in consultation with all stakeholders. 100% foreign direct investment will be permitted for insurance intermediaries. Local sourcing norms will be eased for the FDI in single brand retail sector. Single brand retail sector. It's high time India not only gets integrated into global value chain of production of goods and services, but also become part of the global financial system to mobilize global savings, mostly institutionalized in pension, insurance, sovereign wealth funds, and so on. The government is contemplating organizing an annual global investors meet in India using National Infrastructure Investment Fund as the anchor to get all three sets of global players, top industrialists, corporate leaders, top pension insurance sovereign wealth funds, top pension insurance and sovereign wealth funds, and top digital technology and venture funds also. An important determinant of attracting cross-border investment, Speaker Sir, is availability of investable stock to the foreign portfolio investors. The, this issue assumes greater significance in view of the gradual shift from stock targeted investments towards passive investment whereby funds track global indices composition of which depends upon available floating stock. Accordingly, I propose to increase 
the statutory limit of, for SBI investment in a company from 24% to sectoral foreign investment limit with option given to the concerned corporates to limit it to a lower threshold. FPIs will be permitted to subscribe to listed debt securities issued by the rights or the inwits. Even though India is the world's top remittance recipient, NRI investment in Indian capital markets is comparatively less. With a view to provide NRIs with seamless access to Indian equities, I propose to merge the NRI portfolio investment scheme route with the portfolio, foreign portfolio investment route. New and innovative financial instruments have been launched in the last five years like Infrastructure Investment Trust, the INVITS which I referred to a minute ago, Real Estate Investment Trust, the rights which I referred to a minute ago, as well as models like Toll Operate Transfer, the TOT, as part of the Brownfield Asset Modernization Strategy for Augmenting Infrastructure Investment. India has had a reasonable success in brownfield asset monetization and several inwits and one rate transaction have already been completed. Additionally, the National Highways Authority, NHAI, carried out one TOT transaction as well. The cumulative resources garnered through these instruments and model, Speaker Sir, exceed 24,000 crores of rupees. India has emerged as a major space power with the technology and ability to launch satellites and other space products at global, in a lo globally low cost level. Time has come to harness this ability commercially. A public sector enterprise, namely New Space India Limited, NSIL, has been incorporated as a new commercial arm of the Department of Space to tap the benefits of the research and development carried out by ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. The company will spearhead commercialization of various space products, including production of launch vehicles, transfer of technologies, and marketing of space products. Sir, so I've all the while spoken about the various means through which we can, at a macro level, reaching the $5 trillion target. Now I would just confine myself to talking about Grameen Bharat, the rural India, the various steps which we'll take towards strengthening our economy. Mahatma Gandhiji had said, the soul of India lives in its villages. This year, even as we are marking the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, I submit that our government keeps Antyodhya at the core of all its efforts. At the center of everything that we do, we keep Gaon, Garib or Kisan. मतलब गांव गरीब और किसान केंद्र बिंदु है हमारे हर एक कार्यक्रम में। Honourable Prime Ministers, two mega initiatives of Ujjwala Yojana and Saubhagya Yojana have transformed the lives of every rural family, dramatically improving ease of their living. Household access to clean cooking gas has seen an unprecedented expansion. Through provision of more than 7 crore LPG connections, all villages and almost 100% households across the country have been provided with electricity. A combination of, a combination of efficient implementation and enthusiastic adoption has significantly improved access to energy for rural households. By 2022, the 75th year of Indian independence, I would like to assure the nation that every single rural family 
that every single rural family, except those who are unwilling to take the connection, except, Speaker Sir, it's important to understand, except those who are unwilling to take the connection will have an elect electricity and a clean cooking facility. Fishing and fishermen. Fishing and fishermen communities are closely aligned with farming and are crucial to rural India. Through a focused scheme, the Pradhan Mantri Matsya Sampada Yojana, the Department of Fisheries will establish a robust fisheries management framework. This will address critical gaps in the value chain, including infrastructure modernization, traceability, production, productivity, post-harvest management, and quality control. Pradhan Mantri Sadak, Gram Sadak Yojana has brought many socio-economic gains in the rural areas. To accelerate the speed of achieving universal connectivity of eligible habitations, the target of connecting the eligible and feasible habitations was advanced from 2022 to 2019 itself. I am happy to inform that all weather connectivity has now been provided to over 97% of all such habitations. This has been possible by maintaining a high pace of road construction of 130 to 135 kilometers per day in the last thousand days. Committed to the agenda of sustainable development, 30,000 kilometers of Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana roads have been built using green technology, waste plastic and cold mix technology thereby reducing the carbon footprint. With the changing economic scenario, it is important to upgrade roads connecting villages to the rural markets. For this, Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana Phase 3 is envisaged to build to upgrade 1,25,000 kilometers of road length over the next five years with an estimated cost of 80,250 crores of rupees. 1,25,000 kilometers of roads will be upgraded under Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana Phase 3 and the amount estimated for this is 80,250 crores. Considering the fact that majority of people still live in villages and depend on agriculture and traditional industries, the scheme of fund for upgradation and regeneration of traditional industries, SFURTI, SFURTI is it, aims to set up more common facility centers to facilitate cluster-based development to make the traditional industries more productive profitable and capable for generating sustained employment opportunities. The focus sectors are bamboo, honey and khadi clusters. The SFURTI envisions setting up of new, setting up of 100 new clusters during 2019-20 which should enable 50,000 artisans to join the economic value chain. Further, to improve the technology of such industries, the scheme for promotion of innovation, rural industry and entrepreneurship aspire has been consolidated for setting up of livelihood business incubators and technology business incubators. The scheme contemplates to set up 80 livelihood business incubators and 20 technology business incubators in 2019-20 to develop 75,000 skilled entrepreneurs in agro-rural industry sectors. We will invest widely in agricultural infrastructure. Speaker, sir, 
we will support private entrepreneurship in driving value addition to farmers produce from the field and from those from allied activities too like bamboo like timber from the hedges and also for generating renewable energy annadata kyun urja data bana nahi sakte annadata urja data banane ke liye bahut sare hamare programs hai daring through cooperatives shall also be encouraged by creating infrastructure for cattle feed cattle feed manufacturing milk procurement processing and marketing speaker sir i place my appreciation for our farmers who have made india self sufficient in pulses dalhan ke revolution jo hamare kisan ne kiya पिछले डेढ़ साल में किया है उसके लिए उनको मैं बधाई देना चाहती आई एम श्योर दे विल रिपीट सच अ सक्सेस इवन इन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑयल सीड तिलहन में भी हम उम्मीद रखते हैं हमारे किसान ऐसे ही सफलता पाएंगे आर इंपोर्ट बिल शैल बी रिड्यूस्ड बाय देयर सेवा वी ऑल्सो होप टू फॉर्म टेन थाउजेंड न्यू फार्मर प्रोड्यूसर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन we ensure economy that will ensure economies of scale for farmers over the next 5 years the government will work with state governments to allow farmers to benefit from e nam the agricultural produce marketing cooperatives act should not hamper farmers from getting a fair price for their produce ease ease of doing business ease of doing business and ease of living both should apply to farmers too and we shall go back to basics on one count speaker sir i would like to draw your attention we shall go back to basics on one count zero budget farming zero budget farming may not be a new thing that is why i said we'll go back to basics we need to replicate this innovative model some states have already tried somewhat we need to replicate this innovative model through which in a few states farmers are already being trained in this practice steps such as this can help in doubling our farmers income in time for our 75th year of independence ensuring india's water security and providing access to safe and adequate drinking water to all indians is a priority for this government a major step in this direction has been constitution of the jal shakti mantralay integrating the ministry of water resources river development and ganga regeneration and the ministry of drinking water and sanitation this was done by integrating these many ministries and departments this new mantralay will look at the management of our water resources and water supply in a integrated and holistic manner and will work with states to ensure har ghar jal har ghar jal to all rural households by 2024 under the jal jeevan mission this mission under the department of drinking water and sanitation will focus on integrated demand and supply side management of water at the local level including creation of local infrastructure for source sustainability like rainwater harvesting groundwater recharge and management of household wastewater for reuse in agriculture the jal jeevan mission will converge with other central and state government schemes to achieve its objectives of sustainable water supply management across the country the government has identified 1592 blocks which are critical and overexploited 
spread across 256 districts for the Jal Shakti Abhiyan. Besides using funds available under various schemes, the government will also explore possibility of using additional funds available under the Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Planning Authority, the COMPA, for this purpose. Speaker said, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan has touched the very conscious of the nation besides bringing enormous health and environmental benefits. This noble scheme, initiated in 2014, has achieved a resounding success. 9.6 crore toilets have been constructed Nine point six crore toilets have been constructed since October the second, twenty fourteen. More than five point six lakh villages have become open defecation free. We have to build on this success. We must not only sustain the behavioral change seen in people, but also harness the latest technologies available to transform waste into energy. I propose to expand the Swachh Bharat mission to undertake sustainable solid waste management in every village. <laughs> Under the Pradhan Mantri Gramin Digital Saksharata Abhiyan, over 2 crore rural Indians Under the Pradhan Mantri Gramin Digital Saksharata Abhiyan, over 2 crore rural Indians have so far been made digitally literate. To bridge rural-urban digital divide, Bharatnet is targeting internet connectivity in local bodies in every panchayat in the country. This will be speeded up with assistance from Universal Service Obligation Fund under the public-private partnership arrangement. Speaker, sir, till now I focused on some specific features in order that our rural India, Grameen Bharat ke liye. Now I will focus on, focus on Shahri Bharat, urban India. This government sees the rapid urbanization of India as an opportunity rather than a challenge. We have to make both our cities and villages better using technology. This way we can help people live closer to their homes, stop migration into cities, provide essential services to all. Under Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, urban, over 81 lakh houses with an investment of about 4.83 lakh crores have been sanctioned of which construction has started in about 47 lakh houses. Over 26 lakh houses have been completed, for, of which nearly 24 lakh houses have been delivered to the beneficiaries. Large-scale adoption of new technologies for construction of these houses. Over 13 lakh houses have so far been constructed using these new technologies. More than 95% of our cities also have become ODF, open defecation free. 95% of all cities have become or they have declared themselves ODF. More than 45,000 public and community toilets across 1,700 cities have been uploaded on Google Maps, covering more than 53% of India's urban population. Almost one crore citizens have downloaded the Swachata app. The 150, 50th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi is an apt occasion for us to rededicate ourselves to the ideals of the Mahatma. Honorable Prime Minister took the sankalp of achieving Gandhiji's resolve of Swachh Bharat to make India open defecation free by 2nd October 2019. I am very satisfied and I am very happy to report 
to this august house that this would be achieved by the 2nd of october to mark this occasion the rashtriya swachhata kendra will be inaugurated at gandhi darshan rajgarh on 2nd october 2019 a gandhi pedia like in so encyclopedia on gandhi a gandhi pedia is also being developed by national council for science museums to sensitize youth and society at large about positive gandhian values indian railways suburban and long distance services do a phenomenal task in cities like mumbai and smaller cities railways will be encouraged to invest more in suburban railways through special purpose vehicle structures like rapid regional transport system proposed on the delhi merit route i propose to enhance the metro railway initiatives by encouraging more ppp initiatives and ensuring completion of sanctioned works while supporting trans transit oriented development to ensure commercial activity around transit hubs we are in the process of completing the dedicated freight corridor project that will free up some of the existing railway network for passenger trains speaker sir allow me now to speak on the youth of india the government will bring in a new educational national educational policy to transform india's higher education system to one of the global best education systems the new policy proposes major changes in both school and higher education among others better governance systems and brings greater focus on research and innovation we propose to establish a national research foundation to fund to coordinate and to promote research in the country nrs or the national research foundation will assimilate the research grants being given by various ministries independent of each other nrs will ensure that the overall research ecosystem in the country is strengthened with pro focus on identified trust areas relevant to our national priorities and towards basic science without duplication of effort and expenditure we would work out a very progressive and research oriented structure for the nrf itself the funds available with all ministries will be integrated in nrf this would be adequately supplemented with additional funds massive online open courses through swayam initiative have helped bridge the digital divide for disadvantaged uh, the disadvantaged section of our student community to upgrade the quality of teaching the global initiative of academic networks gyan program in higher education was started aimed at tapping the global pool of scientists and researchers the imprint or impacting research innovation and technology scheme began as pan iit and iisc joint initiative to develop a road map for research to solve major engineering and technology challenges in selected domains needed by the country higher educational institutions are becoming the centers of innovation these initiatives have upgraded the quality of education there was not a single indian institution in the top 200 in the world university rankings 5 years back i repeat there was not a single indian institution in the top 200 in the world university rankings for 5 years back due to the concentrated efforts and concerted efforts by our institutions to boost their standards and also to project their credentials better we have now three institutions two iits 
and IASC Bangalore in the top 200 institutional bracket. This is a window open now thanks to all our efforts. We will continue making concerted efforts to improve the performance of our institutions of higher learning. An amount of 400 crores has been provided under the head world-class institutions for the year 2019-20, more than three times the revised estimates for the previous year. More than three times the revised estimates of the previous year. India has the potential to become a hub of higher education. I therefore propose to start a program, Study in India, that will focus on bringing foreign students that will focus on bringing foreign students to India in our higher educational institutions. The regulatory systems of higher education would be reformed comprehensively to promote greater autonomy and focus on better academic outcomes. A draft legislation for setting up of Higher Education Commission of India would be presented in the year ahead. Kelo India scheme, launched in October 2017, has created awareness of sports as an integral part of wellness throughout the country. The government is committed to expand Kelo India scheme and to provide all necessary financial support. To popularize sports at all levels, a national sports education board for development of sports persons would be set up under Kelo India scheme. So, Speaker, this government recognizes and follows the teachings of Lord Bashweshwara. This government recognizes and follows the teachings of Lord Basaveshwara, in particular the principle of Kayaka and Dasoha. Implementing Kayakeva Kailasa, the government enables about 10 million youth to take up industry-relevant skill training through the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. This is helping to create a large pool of skilled manpower with speed and high standards. Demographic trends worldwide show that major economies will face severe labor shortages in the future. To prepare our youth to also take up jobs overseas, we will increase focus on skill sets needed abroad, including language training. We will also lay focus on new age skills like artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, big data, 3D printing, virtual re reality and robotics, which are valued highly both within and outside the country and offer much higher remuneration. Drawing again on Lord Basveshwara, his principle of Dasoha underlines most things this government does. Give it up for giving up LPG subsidy or the various pension schemes or on the principle of sharing through distribution for the wellness of society, which is what Lord Basveshwara did even earlier in a millennia ago. The government is proposing to streamline multiple labor laws into a set of four labor codes. So for the sake of labor welfare, I like to repeat this slide. The government is proposing to streamline multiple labor laws into a set of four labor codes. Codes. C-O-D-E-S, codes. This will ensure that process of registration and filing of returns will get standardized and streamlined. With various labor-related definitions getting standardized, it is expected that there shall be less disputes. We propose, again sir, this is an interesting idea, I wish to draw your attention. We propose to start a television program within the DD bouquet of channels exclusively for startups.
this shall serve as a platform for promoting startups discussing issues affecting their growth match making with venture capitalists and for funding and tax planning this channel shall be designed and executed by startups themselves later in the speech i shall deal with taxation matters of the startups so stand up india scheme has delivered enormous benefits the country is witnessing emergence of thousands of entrepreneurs from women and also from scheduled caste and scheduled tribes most of them assisted to set up their own businesses and industry with capital provided under the stand up india scheme considering the beneficial results of the scheme and strong demand for its continuous continuous by the sc and st com communities themselves the scheme would now be continued for the entire period coinciding with the 15th finance commission that is 2020 to 2025 the banks will provide financial assistance for demand based businesses including for example for acquisition of scavenging machines and robots sir speaker the stand up india scheme has made human dignity and self esteem to go up kai keva kai lasa i said earlier and i repeat the ministry of petroleum and natural gas has enabled sc and st entrepreneurs in providing bulk lpg transportation contracts to them in a matter of 2 years over 300 entrepreneurs have emerged as a result of the stand up scheme machines and robots have been deployed to do scavenging which also saved the manual scavengers their dignity the synthesis between stand up and start up with commercial banks playing the catalyst has brought this transformational change sir now i shall concentrate a few paragraphs on ease of living after all everything that this government does with the principle of minimum government maximum governance is aimed at getting ordinary citizens life a bit easier so the ease of living is a very important principle this government aims to bring greater ease of living in the lives of its citizens digital payments are gaining acceptance everywhere including by the government use of technology is an effective way to ensure this pradhan mantri shram yogi man dhan was launched on 5th march 2019 by the honorable prime minister in amdavad the scheme aims at providing 3000 rupees per month as pension on attaining the age of 60 to crores of workers in unorganized and informal sector about 30 lakh workers have already joined the scheme for good quality of life and ease of living maintaining a cleaner environment and ensuring sustainable energy use in is absolutely vital a program of mass scaling up of led bulbs for widespread distribution at household level was taken up resulting into massive replacement of incandescent bulbs and cfls in the country approximately 35 crore led bulbs have been distributed under the ujala yojana leading to a cost saving and this is very impressive i request through you respected speaker that all members present here listen to what saving cost saving has emerged because of the led bulbs approximately 35 crore led bulbs have been distributed under the ujala yojana leading to a cost saving of 18341 crores and this 18341 crores annually every year because of led this is what the country is saving 
it is going to be free of incandescent india is going to be free of incandescent bulbs and cl12 use has already become minuscule we will use the approach of mission led bulb method to promote the use of solar stoves and battery chargers in the country to make railway travel a pleasant and satisfying experience to the common citizen again ease of living we will launch a massive program of railway station modernization this year railway station modernization will be launched this year honorable speaker sir i draw the attention to the women of india nari to narayani we believe obviously this country's tradition has been nari to narayani swami vivekananda in a letter to swami ramakrishnananda had said there's no chance for the welfare of the world unless the condition of women is improved i repeat there is no chance for the welfare of the world unless the condition of women is improved it is not possible it is not possible for a bird to fly on one wing swami vivekananda's words this government believes that we can make progress with greater women's participation in india in india's growth story sir i would like to draw your attention in india's growth story particularly in the rural economy gramin arth vyavastha mein the role of women is a very sweet story gramin arth vyavastha mein mahila ki bhagidari ekdam ek sunera kahani hai this government wishes to encourage and facilitate the role of women gender analysis of the budget aimed at examining the budgetary allocation through a gender lens has been in place for over a decade i propose to form a broad based committee with government and private stakeholders to evaluate and suggest action for moving forward there is no segment of human life where the contribution of women is not significant there is no segment where the contribution of women is not significant this government firmly believes that the socio economic transformation that is taking place particularly in the last decade india's women's role and leadership is distinct the recent elections have shown record turnout of women voters at par with men record turnout of women voters at par with men we also have a record number of 78 women mps here in this house this reinforces our approach of going beyond just women centric policy i repeat this reinforces our approach of going beyond just women centric policy making to building women led initiatives and movements this government speaker sir has supported and encouraged women entrepreneurship through various schemes such as mudra stand up india self help group support and so on in order to further encourage women enterprises i propose to expand the women shg interest subvention program to all districts in india furthermore for every verified women shg member having a jandan bank account for every verified women shg member having a jandan account an over overdraft of 5000 shall be allowed again one woman in every shg which is spread all across the country one woman in every shg will also be made eligible for a loan up to 1 lakh under the mudra scheme
speaker, sir, at the beginning I did tell you about India's soft power. India's soft power, which, I, which is the next section I'll concentrate on, India's soft power is appreciated in so many different ways. Some simple examples, sir, in the last three years on the International Yoga Day, yoga has been practiced in large numbers in 192 countries around the world. Mahatma Gandhi's favorite bhajan, Vaishnava Janto, Tene Kahiye, was sung by the respective uh, leads, uh, lead artists from over 40 countries. The annual Bharat Ko Jano quiz competition is sought after as an event to participate by not only NRIs, non-resident Indians, but also several foreigners themselves. I propose to consider issuing Aadhaar card for non-resident Indians with Indian passports after their arrival in India without waiting for 180 days. I repeat it. I propose to consider issuing Aadhaar cards for non-resident Indians with Indian passports after their arrival in India without waiting for the mandatory 180 days, without waiting the issue. I propose to launch a mission which will integrate our traditional artisans and their creative products with global markets. Wherever necessary, we shall obtain patents for them and the geographical index indicators, GI, for them. I wish to say this in Hindi for the larger audience of traditional artisans. Is uddeshya se main is na garima mai prangan se pehli baar yeh goshna karti hu ki hum Bharat ke srijanatmak udyogon ko arthvivastha se jod kar jaha avashak hai baudik sampata adhikaro se संरक्षित कर, करके राष्ट्रीय और अंतर्राष्ट्रीय बाजार तब तक पहुंचाने की मुहिम प्रारंभ करेंगे। To give further impetus to India's growing influence and leadership in the international community, government decided to open Indian embassies and high commissions abroad, abo, abroad in countries where India does not have a resident diplomatic mission as yet. Accordingly, in March 2018, government approved opening of 18 new Indian diplomatic missions in Africa. Five embassies have already been opened in Rwanda, Djibouti, Equatorial Guinea, Republic of Guinea and Burkina Faso in the year 2018-19. Government intends to open another four embassies, new ones, in the year 2019-20. This will not only increase the footprint of India's overseas presence, but also enable us to provide better and more accessible public services, especially to the local Indian communities in these countries. In line with our ancient wisdom, India has always pursued a policy of economic cooperation with countries through bilateral and regional coordination. Indian Development Assistance Scheme, IDAS, IDEAS, provides concessional financing for projects and contributes to infrastructure development and capacity building in the recipient developing countries. Mindful of our position, as the sixth largest economy, we will look at alternative development models which prepare, which include private sector equity, multilateral financing, contributions from corporates, non-residents, and so on. I propose to revamp the IDEA scheme during the current financial year. The government is developing 17 iconic tourism sites into world-class tourist destinations and to serve as a model to other tourism sites. The iconic tourism sites would enhance visitor experience, 
which would lead to increased visits of both domestic and international tourists at these destinations. With the objective of preserving rich tribal heritage, a digital repository is developed where documents of folk songs, photos and videos regarding the, their evolution, place of origin, lifestyle, architecture, education, levels, skill sets, traditional and fo traditional art, folk dances and other anthropological details of the tribes in India will be stored. The repository will further be enriched and strengthened as we go along. Speaker sir, now I come to saying what we propose about the banking and the financial sector. Financial gains from cleaning of the banking system are now amply visible. NPAs, meaning non-performing assets, of commercial banks have reduced by over 1 lakh crore over the last year. Record recovery of over 4 lakh crore due to IBC and other measures has been affected in the last four years. Provision coverage ratio is now at its highest in seven years and domestic credit growth has risen to risen by 13.8 percent. Government has smoothly carried out consolidation reducing the number of private sector, public sector banks by eight. Government has smoothly carried out consolidation reducing the number of public sector banks by eight. At the same time, as many as six public sector banks have been enabled to come out of prompt corrective action framework. We have enabled six public sector banks to come out of that situation. Having ad addressed the legacy issues, public sector banks are now proposed to be further provided 70,000 crores of rupees capital to boost credit for a strong impetus to the economy. 70,000 crores of rupees will be provided in order that capital will be boosted so that credit can be improved. To further improve ease of living, they will leverage technology offering online personal loans, doorstep banking and enabling customers of one public sector bank to access services across all public sector banks and so on. In addition, government will initiate steps to empower account holders to remedy the current situation in which they do not have control over depo deposits of cash by others into their accounts. There is an issue now. Unknowing to them, there are money being deposited into accounts and that is creating a lot of problems for customers. So we will be addressing that also. We will initiate steps to address that problem. Reforms will also be undertaken to strengthen governance in public sector banks. Non-banking financial companies are playing an extremely important role in sustaining consumption demand as well as capital formation in small and medium industrial segment. NBFCs that are fundamentally sound should continue to get funding from banks and mutual funds without being unduly risk averse. For purchase of high rated pooled assets of financially sound NBFCs amounting to a total of 1 lakh rupee, 1 lakh crore rupees during the current financial year, government will provide one time six months partial credit guarantee to public sector banks for the first loss of up to 10 percent. I shall read this again. For the purchase of high rated pooled assets of financially sound NBFCs amounting to a total of 1 lakh crores of rupees during the current financial year, government will provide one time six months partial credit guarantee to public sector banks for first loss 
up to 10%. Further, Reserve Bank of India is the regulator of the NBFCs. However, RBI has limited regulatory authority over NBFCs. Appropriate proposals for strengthening the regulatory authority of RBI over NBFCs are being placed in the finance bill. NBFCs, which do, no, which do public placement of debt, have to maintain a debenture redemption reserve. And in addition, a special reserve as required by RBI has also to be maintained. To allow NBFCs to raise funds in public issues, the requirement of creating a DRR, that is a debenture redemption reserve, which is currently applicable for only public issues as private placements are exempt, this will be done away with. To bring more participants, especially NBFCs, not registered as NBFCs factor the, on the TREDS platform, amendment in the Factoring Regulation Act 2011 is necessary and steps will be taken to allow all NBFCs to directly participate on the TREDS platform. Efficient and conducive regulation of the housing sector is extremely important in our context. The National Housing Bank, besides being a refinancer and a lender, is also the regulator of the housing finance sector. This gives a somewhat conflicting and difficult mandate to the NHP. I am proposing to return the regulation authority over the housing finance sector from the NHB, National Housing Board, to the RBI. I am proposing, I repeat, I am proposing to return the regulation authority over the housing finance sector from NHB to the RBI. Necessary proposals have been placed in the finance bill even for that. Government has announced an, its intention to invest 100 lakh crores in infrastructure over the next five years. 100 lakh crores for infrastructure over the next five years. To this end, it is proposed to set up an expert committee to study the current situation relating to long-term finance and our past experience with development finance institutions and recommend this committee shall recommend the structure and required flow of funds through development finance institutions. The situation will be review reviewed by them and they will suggest, suggest measures. Pension Fund Regulatory Development Authority, PFRDA, implements and regulates the national pension system, the NPS and Atal Pension Yojana through various intermediaries including inter alia the NPS Trust, keeping in view the wider interest of the subscribers and to maintain arm's length relationship of the NPS Trust with PFRDA, steps will be taken to separate the NPS Trust from PFRDA with appropriate organizational structure. To facilitate onshore onshoring of international in insurance transactions and to enable opening of branches by foreign reinsurers in the International Financial Service Center, it is proposed to reduce net owned fund requirement from 5,000 crores to 1,000 crores, 1,000 crores. I, I'll repeat that sentence, sir. To facilitate onshoring of international insurance transactions and to enable opening of branches by foreign reinsurers in the International Financial Services Center, it is proposed to reduce net owned fund requirement from 5,000 crores to 1,000 crores. Government has been following the policy of disinvestment in non-financial public sector undertakings, maintaining government stake not to go below 51%. Government is considering in case where the undertaking is still to be retained in government control to go below 51% to an appropriate level on case-to-case -case basis. Government has also decided 
government has also decided to modify present policy of retaining 51% government stake to retaining 51% stake inclusive of the stake of government controlled institutions sir speaker in order to improve the capital in flows into the indian economy it is important to align domestic corporate systems and practices with global ones it is also appreciated that global finance movement in equity uses certain parameters to evaluate the stocks in which they choose to invest the government intends to further encourage retail participation in cpscs which of late has shown very encouraging upward trend in order to provide additional investment space the government would realign its holding in cpscs including banks to permit greater availability of its shares and to improve depth of its market strategic disinvestment of select cpscs would continue to remain a priority of this government in view of current macroeconomic parameters government would not only reinitiate the process of strategic disinvestment of air india but would offer more cpscs for strategic participation by the private sector i repeat this sentence strategic disinvestment of select cpscs would continue to remain a priority for this government in view of current macroeconomic parameters government would not only reinitiate the process of strategic disinvestment of air india but also would offer more cpscs for strategic participation by the private sector government is setting an enhanced target of rupees 1 lakh 5000 crore of disinvestment receipts for the financial year 2019-20 the government will undertake strategic sale of PS psus the government will also continue to do consolidation of psus in the non financial space as well sir etfs have proved to be an important investment opportunity for retail investors and has turned out to be a good instrument of government of india's disinvestment program to expand this further government will offer an investment option in etf on the line of equity linked savings scheme which is elss this would encourage long term investments in cpscs for bringing better public ownership of the psus and also bring greater commercial and market orientation of the listed psus the government will take all necessary steps to meet public shareholding norms of 25% for all listed psus and raise the foreign shareholding limits to maximum permissible sector limits for all psus companies which are part of emerging market index so the indian sovereign debt external debt india's sovereign external debt to gdp is among the lowest globally at less than 5% honorable speaker sir this is a very important indicator for india i am repeating the line india's sovereign external debt to gdp is among the lowest globally at less than 5% the government will start raising a part of its gross borrowing program in external markets in external currencies this will also have beneficial impact on demand situation for the government securities in domestic market a new series of coins sir a new series of coins of 1 rupee 2 rupees 5 rupees 10 rupees and 20 rupees easily identifiable to the visually impaired also were released by the government minister by the honorable prime minister on 7th march 2019 these new coins will be made available for public use shortly sir in the first 50 years 
after independence we emphasized on rights so i draw your attention to this line which marks the end of part a of my speech in the first 50 years after independence we emphasized on rights marking 75 years of our independence we should place emphasis on our duty towards india place emphasis on our duty towards india without undermining our rights thinkers all over the world have supported the argument that in performing one's duty protection of one's rights is inherent in performing one's duty the protection of one's right is inherent in it for the bright future of india when again in 2022 we will remember our freedom fighters we should dedicate ourselves to the service of the nation so now i move to part b which is something of great interest for all of us taxation related honorable speaker sir i see a lot of members sitting up mr speaker sir i begin by thanking our tax payers who as responsible citizens our tax payers who as responsible citizens perform their duty by paying their taxes it is because of their valuable contribution that our government is able to work for our collective dream of inclusive and all round development of our nation i place my appreciation to the honest tax payer of india at this juncture sir i find wisdom in a line from purananuru which is a sangam time tamil literature piece a tamil sangam era work and this is done by pisirandiya andayar pisirandayar pisirandayar yes the verse yanai pugunda nilam a land into which elephant gets in yanai pugunda nilam this was sung as an advice to the king a pandian king pandian aruvudai nambi the king is pandian aruvudai nambi and pisirandayar gives this advice to him it's a long verse i'm only picking up the first line some line from the middle and the end kai nel aruthu kavalam koline kai nel aruthu kavalam koline arivudai vendan neriyarindu koline arivudai vendan neriyarindu koline parivu tapa edukkum pindam natchin parivu tapa edukkum pindam natchin yaanai pukka pulam pol yaanai pukka pulam pola thaanum unnan ulagamum kedume meaning meaning a few mounds of rice just a few mounds of rice from paddy that is harvested from a small piece of land would be sufficient for the elephant for an elephant just a few mounds of rice cooked from paddy which is taken from a small piece of land will be sufficient but what if the elephant itself enters into the field and starts eating it would eat far lesser than what it will trample with its foot i hope the meaning is clear so the advice given to pandian arivudai dambi is a valuable advice that this government appreciates an elephant if it is given mounds of rice here i would refer to taxation will be quite happy 
it doesn't have to enter into the field and trample to eat the food. So we don't intend to trample anybody. <laughs> sir, in direct taxes, therefore, in direct taxes, therefore, sir, Mr. Speaker, due to a slew of efforts taken by our government, the direct tax revenue has significantly increased over the past couple of years. It has increased by over 78% from 6.38 lakh crores in financial year 2013-14 to around 11.37 lakh, lakh crores in financial year 2018. From 6.38 lakh crores to 11.37 lakh crores between 13-14 and 18-19. It is now growing at double-digit rate every year. Let me recall, sir, and reiterate this government's effort over the past five years to alleviate the tax burden on small and medium income earners. This includes self-employed as well as small traders, salary earners and senior citizens. Only when their annual taxable income exceeds 5 lakhs, only when their annual taxable income exceeds 5 lakhs, they are required to pay any income tax. The details of our efforts and achievements on this front during the past few years are given in the annex share to the speech. I am not going into the details of it. Speaker, sir, my tax proposals will aim to stimulate growth, incentivize affordable housing, and encourage startups by releasing the entrepreneurial spirit. It will also be geared towards promoting digital economy. I aim to simplif simplify tax administration and bring greater transparency. So far, so far as corporate tax is concerned, we continue with phased reduction in rates. Currently, a lower rate of 25% is only applicable to companies having annual turnover up to 250 crores. Currently, the lower rate of 25% is only applicable to companies having annual turnover of up to 250 crores. I propose to widen this to include all companies having an annual turnover of up to 400 crores. This will cover, this will cover 99.3% of all the companies. Only, now, only 0.7% of companies will remain outside of this rate. So, in order to boost economic growth and make in India, the government will launch a scheme to invite global companies through a transparent competitive bidding to set up <coughs> mega manufacturing plants in sunrise and advanced technology areas such as semiconductor fabrication, solar photo photovoltaic cells, lithium storage batteries, solar electric charging infrastructure, computer servers, laptops, etc and provide them investment-linked income tax exemptions under 35 AD of the Income Tax Act and other indirect tax benefits so on electric vehicles. Considering our large consumer base, we aim to leapfrog and envision India as a global hub of manufacturing of electric vehicles a global hub of manufacturing electric vehicles. Inclusion of solar storage batteries and charging infrastructure in the above scheme will boost our efforts. Government has already moved the GST Council to lower the GST rate on electric vehicles from 12 to 5 percent. Also to make electric vehicle affordable to consumers, our government will provide additional income tax deduction, additional income tax deduction of 1.5 lakhs of rupees on the interest paid on loans taken to purchase electric vehicles. 
what does this mean this amounts to a benefit of 2.5 lakh crores over the loan period to the taxpayer who takes loans to purchase electric vehicles so by the time the entire period of the loan ends for you having taken the loan for buying an electric vehicle you would benefit to the level of 2.5 lakh rupees because of this income tax deduction which is being brought in for encouraging purchase of electric vehicles so startups as i said when i was talking about the youth of this country startups require and we have been consistently providing them all the encouragement startups in india are taking firm roots and their continued growth needs to be encouraged to resolve the so called angel tax issue i'm sure a lot of members are concerned on this issue to resolve the so called angel tax issue the startups and their investors who file requisite declarations and provide information in their returns will not be subjected to any kind of scrutiny in respect of valuation of share premium the issue of establishing identity of the investor and source of his funds will be resolved by putting in place a mechanism of e verification so there's no man to man interface there with this funds raised by startups will not require with this the funds raised by startups will not require any kind of scrutiny from the income tax department in addition special administrative arrangements shall be made by the central board of direct taxes for pending assessments of startups and redressal of their grievances it will be ensured that no inquiry or verification in such cases be carried out by the assessing officer without obtaining approval of a supervisory office so the element of discretion with which startups were suffering has been removed so without obtaining the approval of a supervisory officer an assessing officer shall not worry the assessee at present startups are not required to justify fair market value of their shares issued to certain investors including category 1 alternative investment funds i propose to extend this benefit to category 2 alternative investment funds also at the moment it's available for ais category 1 now i expand this to include category 2 ais also therefore valuation of shares issued to these funds shall be beyond the scope of income tax scrutiny again you get out of income tax scrutiny one that has been done i also pro propose to relax some of the conditions for carry forward and set off losses in the case of startups it also pro i also propose to extend the period of exemption of capital gains arising from sale of residential house for investment in startups up to 31 3 and relax certain other conditions of this exemption so affordable housing which is an aim of this government for realization of the goal of housing for all and affordable housing a tax holiday has already been provided on the profits earned by developers of affordable housing also interest paid on housing loans is allowed as a deduction to the extent of 2 lakhs in respect of self occupied property in order to provide a further impetus i propose to allow an additional deduction of up to 1 lakh 50000 rupees for interest paid on loans borrowed up to 31st march 2020 next year for purchase of affordable house valued up to 45 lakhs therefore a person purchasing an affordable house will now get an enhanced interest deduction up to 3.5 lakhs of rupees this will translate into benefit of 7 lakh of rupees to the middle class home buyers 
over their loan period of 15 years. Just as we said about the electric cars, now we are saying the tax deduction provision that we are coming in now with will enable home buyers of the affordable home category that in the period of 15 years when your loan, home loan runs, the net gain would be 7 lakh of rupees. This will imme uh, immediately benefit a lot of middle class. So on the NBFCs, a lot of discussion happens today about N NBFCs. Non-banking financial companies play an increasingly important role in India's financial system. With the enhanced levels of regulation they are subjected to by the Reserve Bank of India, there is a need to provide greater parity in their tax treatments vis-a-vis -vis scheduled banks. Currently, interest on certain bad or doubtful debts made by scheduled banks and other financial institutions is allowed to be offered to tax in the year in which this interest is actually received. I propose to extend this facility to deposit taking as well as systematically important non-deposit taking NBFCs also. So the International Financial Services Centre, the GIFT city, series of measures have already been taken in the past by this government. With a view to incentivizing the IFSC, I propose to provide several direct tax incentives to an IFSC including 100% profit link deduction under Section 80 LA in any 10-year block within a 15-year period. Exemption from dividend distribution tax from current and accumulated income to companies and mutual funds. Exemption on capital gain to Category 3 AIF and interest payment on loan taken from non-residents. So securities transaction tax. I propose to give relief in levy of securities transaction tax by restricting it only to the difference between the settlement and the strike price in case of exercise of option. Simplification and ease of living. India's ease of doing business ranking under the category of paying taxes showed a significant jump from 172 in 2017 to 121 in the year 2019. From 172 we have come to 121, a drastic improvement. I now propose to implement series of measures that will leverage technology to make compliance easier for the taxpayer. Interchangeability of PAN and Aadhaar. Mr. Speaker, sir, more than 120 crore Indians now have Aadhaar card. Therefore, for ease and convenience of taxpayers, I propose to make PAN and Aadhaar interchangeable and allow those who do not have PAN card to file income tax return by simply quoting their Aadhaar number and also use it wherever they are required to coat the pan. So everywhere where you are required to coat the pan, instead you can just do Aadhaar and even if you don't have a pan, there is no problem. So pre-filling of income tax returns. Pre-filled tax returns will be made available to taxpayers which will contain details of salary income, capital gains from securities, bank interest and dividends, etc. And tax deductions also. Information regarding these incomes will be collected from the concerned sources such as banks, stock exchanges, mutual funds, EPFO, state registration departments and so on. This will not only significantly reduce the time taken to file tax return but will also encourage accuracy of reporting of income tax. So faceless e-assessment, this is a very important thing about which there has been a lot of discussion. Assessees should not face any kind of harassment. The existing system of scrutiny assessments in the income tax department involves a high level of personal interaction between the taxpayer and the department. 
which leads to certain undesirable practices and on the part of the tax officials. To eliminate such instances and to give shape to the vision of Honourable Prime Minister, a scheme of faceless assessment in electronic mode involving no human interface is being launched this year in a phased manner. To start with, such e-assessments shall be carried out in cases requiring verification of certain specified transactions or discrepancies. Cases selected for scrutiny shall be allocated to assessment units in a random manner and notices shall be issued electronically only by a central cell without disclosing the name, designation or location of the assessing officer. The central cell shall be the single point of contact between the taxpayer and the department. This new scheme of assessment will represent a paradigm shift in the functioning of the income tax department. Sir, on digital payments, our government has taken a number of initiatives in the recent past for the promotion of digital payments and less cash economy. To promote digital permits for payments further, I propose to take a slew of measures to discourage the practice of making business payments in cash, to discourage the practice of making business payments in cash, I propose to levy TDS tax, tax deduction at source of 2% on cash withdrawal exceeding 1 crore in a year from a bank account. I repeat this. To discourage the practice of making business payments in cash, I propose to levy TDS of 2% on cash withdrawal exceeding 1 crore in a year from a bank account. Further, there are low-cost digital modes of payment such as BEAM UPI, UPI QR code, Aadhaar Pay, certain debit cards, NEFT, RTGS, etc., which can be used to promote less cash economy. I therefore propose that the business establishments with annual turnover of more than 50 crores shall offer such low-cost digital modes of payment to their customers and no charges, no charges or merchant discount rates shall be imposed on customers as well as the merchants. No charges or merchant discount rates shall be imposed on customers as well as the merchants. RBI and banks will absorb these costs from the savings that will accrue to them on account of handling less cash as people move to these digital modes of payment. Necessary amendments are being made in the Income Tax Act and the Payments and Settlements System Act of 2007 to give effect to these provisions. So now about the revenue mobilization. I'm sure it's equally concerning for all of us. Mr. Speaker, sir, as I have started earlier, we have taken several measures in the past to alleviate the tax burden on small and medium income earners as those having annual income up to 5 lakhs are not required to pay any income tax. We are thankful to the taxpayers who play a major role in nation building by paying their taxes. However, in view of the rising income levels, those in the highest income brackets need to contribute more to the nation's development. I therefore propose to enhance the surcharge on individuals having taxable income from 2 crore to 5 crores and 5 crore and above so that effective tax rates for these two categories will increase by around 3% and 7% respectively. So the other measures, I also propose to simplify the tax law to reduce even hardships being caused to taxpayers, which include 
enhancing tax, tax, threshold of tax for launching prosecution for non-filing of returns and exempting appropriate class of persons from the anti-abuse provision of Section 50 CA and Section 56 of the Income Tax Act. So the indirect taxes. Now coming to indirect taxes, sir, we are aware that the landscape has changed significantly with the implementation of the GST. In every sense, this has been a monumental reform. In every sense, this has been a monumental reform, centre and states coming together and agreeing to pull in their sovereign power of taxation for common good of the country was unprecedented. 17 taxes and 13 cesses became one tax. Multitude of rates instantly became four. Almost all commodities saw rate reduction. Tens of returns were replaced by just one. Taxpayers' interface with tax departments got reduced. Border checks got reduced and eliminated in many cases. Goods started moving freely across states, which saved time and energy. A truck started doing two, two trips in the same time in which it was doing one. Thus, dream of one nation, one tax, one market was realized. The GST Council deserves all the credit for this. Sir, in the initial phase, GST witnessed certain teething problems. This was natural considering the scale of the reform. However, the Council, the Centre and the States proactively worked to resolve these issues. GST rates have also been reduced significantly, where relief of about, relief of about 92,000 crores per year has been given. We should not lose sight of this fact when judging the performance of the GST. The details are given in the annexure. We are further simplifying the GST processes. A simplified single monthly return is being rolled out. Taxpayer having annual turnover of less than 5 crore shall file only quarterly returns. Free accounting software for return preparation has been made available to small businesses. A fully automated GST refund module shall be implemented. Multiple tax ledgers for a taxpayer shall be replaced by just one. It's also proposed to move an electronic invoice system wherein invoice details will be captured in a central system at the time of issue. This will eventually be used to prefill a taxpayer's return. There will be no need for a separate e-way bill. Its rollout, its rollout would begin from January 2020. Electronic invoice system will significantly reduce the compliance burden. Sir, on the customs side, my proposals are driven with the objective of securing our borders, achieving higher domestic value addition through Make in India, reducing import dependence, protection to MSME, and promoting clean energy, curbing non-essential imports, and correcting inversions. Defense has an immediate requirement of modernization and upgradation. This is a national priority. For this purpose, import of defense equipment that are not being manufactured in India are being exempted from the basic customs duty. Make in India is a cherished goal. In order to provide domestic industry a level playing field, basic customs duty is being increased on items such as cashew kernels, PVC, vinyl flooring, tiles, metal fittings, mountings for furniture, auto parts, certain kinds of synthetic rubber, marble labs, slabs, optical fiber cable, CCTV camera, IP camera, digital and network video recorders, and so on. Also, exemptions from on certain electrical, electronic items which are now being manufactured in India are being withdrawn 
further end use based exemptions on palm stearin in fatty oils and exemptions to various kinds of papers are also being withdrawn to encourage domestic publishing and printing industry 5% customs duty is being imposed on imported books to further promote domestic manufacturing customs duty reductions are being proposed on certain raw materials and capital goods these include certain inputs of crgo sheets amorphous alloy ribbon ethylene dichloride propylene oxide cobalt mat naphtha wool fibers inputs for manufacture of artificial kidney and disposable sterilized dialyzer and fuels for nuclear power plants to further incentivize e mobility customs duty is being exempted on certain parts of electric vehicles customs duty is also being exempted on capital goods required for manufacture of specified electronic goods so the export duty is being rationalized on raw and finished leather to provide relief to this sector crude prices have softened from their highs this gives me room to review excise duty and cess on petrol and diesel i propose to increase special additional excise duty and road and infrastructure cess each one by 1 rupee a liter on petrol and diesel it is also proposed it is also proposed to increase it is also proposed to increase custom duty on gold and metals from 10% to 12.5% it is also proposed to increase custom duty on gold and other precious metals from 10 to 12.5% tobacco products and crude attract national calamity and contingent duty in certain cases this levy has been contested on the ground that there is no basic excise duty on these items to address this issue a nominal basic excise duty is being imposed sir i am also proposing few amendments to the customs act recent trends reveal that certain bogus entities are resorting to unfair practices to avail undue concessions and export incentives while we have intensified our efforts against such nefarious activities provisions are being incorporated in the act for enhanced penalty and prosecution for such offenses further misuse of duty free scripts and drawback facility involving more than 50 lakh of rupees will be a cognizable and non bailable offense gst has completed 2 years an area that concerns me is that we have huge pending litigations from pre gst regime more than 3.75 lakh crores is of rupees is being blocked in litigations and service tax and excise there is a need to unload this baggage and allow businesses to move on i therefore propose a legacy dispute resolution scheme a legacy dispute resolution scheme that will allow quick closure of these litigations i would urge the trade and business to avail this opportunity and be free from legacy litigations the details of my tax proposals are given in the annexure sir speaker i thank you for this opportunity and with these words i commend the budget to this august house thank you to shrimati nirmala sitaram manya vitt mantri ji uh, i just would like to mention although i have commended the budget i just would like to mention i have not mentioned specific allocations for the scheme and programs i have not mentioned specific allocations 
for schemes and programs. All these details are available in the budget documents as much as my speech, speeches and action. I want to take this opportunity for the response that we have received for the crowdsourcing of ideas for the budget. Immense suggestions from common citizens reached us. We have benefited from the crowdsourcing. The one last mention which is more for the curiosity sake, the fiscal deficit. The fiscal deficit this year is 3.3 percent brought down from 3.4 percent. Thank you. Item number two, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, Mani Vitt Mantri Ji. Sir, with your permission, I rise to lay on the table the statements regarding medium term fiscal policy, come fiscal policy statement, and the macro economic framework statement under section 3 subsection 1 of the fiscal responsibility and budget management frbm act 2003 item number 3 sir with your permission again i rise to move for leave to introduce the finance number 2 bill 2019 prashn ye ki vitt vidhek ko punasthapit karne ki anumati pradan ki jaye जो सदस्य इसके पक्ष में हां कहें जो सदस्य किसी विरोध में ना कहें मेरे विचार में निर्णय हां वालों के पक्ष में आए हां वालों के पक्ष में आए अनुमति प्रदान की जाती है माननीय मंत्री जी अब विधेयक को पुनः स्थापित करें सर आई नाउ इंट्रोड्यूस द बिल 